Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show, Tuesday, 20th of August. I'm back from my little short break. Not for long, though. I'm on another one uh, later on this week. But uh, it gives me back and get stuck into markets. I hope you've all been well. Uh, just before we kick off, you can see there uh, on your screen our trader funding program. If you're not part of it already, do check it out. Uh, your way of low risk way of uh, scaling up your trading accounts. Uh, if you want to look at some of the higher accounts that we have available there, um, you can trade up to a million dollars depending on the assessment there. Um, I'm sure a lot of you already know about uh, funding programs and uh, other competitors shall we say um we are not the cheapest but we don't uh, or the others don't offer the level of support that we do free time on forex analytics one-to-one -one sessions with the main man blake um and all the support you get here at uh, forex analytics so uh, check that out i shall pop the link in the chat room for you there if you want to go and have a look at that right cracking on morning k man how you doing mate hey good morning ryan good morning everybody yeah um Still recovering from my holiday, but uh, yeah, I'm doing fine, man. Doing fine. Back in the saddle since yesterday, so uh, yeah, doing good. I hope your little break was, uh, or your little breaks uh, are are going well. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, splitting splitting things up, trying to cover as much of this uh, summer holiday with the kids as possible without taking too much away from the screens. But uh, you had a good break as well. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Lots of. Uh, Quality family time. Uh, also went to Belgium, had my uh, Tokyo branch of the family over. Um, nice. I finally know what I'm going to be grandfather of. It's going to be a boy. <laughs> oh, congrats, mate. Congrats. Yes. Yeah, well done, mate. Oh, blimey. Grandfather K. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no I'm, already, I'm already scared. <laughs> <laughs> you better get your uh, babysitting duty calendar already sorted out, mate. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll I'll have to make uh, some space in my uh, coaching program for my uh, grandson. <laughs> what to coach him? <laughs> right, let's get uh, cracking then and uh, getting stuck into markets. Uh, please forgive me if I uh, repeat any bits and bobs that obviously Kay's covered the last uh, day or whatever. Um, but uh, we'll go over it anyway. I'm going to kick off over in China. They fixed uh, their rate down at the 713s. It was creeping up to 715s, but uh, they pulled it down back to the 713s, down nearly uh, 100 pips uh, on yesterday's fix. Um, they kept their one-year LPR loan prime rate and five-year LPR unchanged. Uh, as you can see there, those two rates there. Uh, the one-year unchanged 3.35, five-year 3.85. So no other changes of rates other than those ones we got uh, a few weeks ago that came a bit out of the blue. Um, over in Japan, um, various people are throwing their hats into the rings to replace uh, Kashida later on. Uh, we've had the digital minister, Taro Kono. Uh, he plans to announce his running. Um, he's at uh, the LDP, um, and the former Economic Security Minister, Takayuki Kobayashi, is also said to be in the running. So, as I say, lots of uh, people are going to start putting their hats forward. Um, August 26th is, uh, I think, the declaration time for all those, uh, but uh, we'll probably see plenty more from that. No idea about any of those guys, um, but we'll, we'll deal with that in June. Yeah, oh, Whoops. yeah go on, mate. Yeah, sorry. Oh, sorry about that background noise. Um, yeah, I mean, as I was saying yesterday, the vote for uh, replacing um, Kishida will be held as an LDP head will be held on 27th of September. And so far, all those who are expected to be in the running uh, have already said that they will be. So uh, it, it's all going pretty much as expected after the uh, Kishida surprise announcement. He would uh, he would retire. Yeah, very much so. Um, over at the Bank of Japan, uh, Bloomberg uh, threw up a story uh, overnight or this morning um, saying that a research note from the bank uh, has indicated that a rate hike is still on the table. Um, now, this is banks do this a lot. They have economists uh, and they have people who come in and do research pieces. Uh, it doesn't mean it's a direct voice of the BOJ. 
So what these people write doesn't mean that uh, the BOJ will take that on board and use it for policy. But anyway, this story's been flagged up. Um, the main summary from this report uh, or these research notes is saying that price setting behaviours are shifting amid an intensified upward pressure on wages. Uh, now, obviously, Bloomberg being Bloomberg have uh, drawn their own conclusion that this means that uh, rate hikes are still going. We did see a little bit of a downward move in yen pairs on the back of that drop. Uh, but as I said, these lots of central banks do these research notes, um, getting in academics and whatnot to write up pieces. Um, it doesn't really change much. Uh, we know that uh, they may look to hike again. Uh, they're waiting for karma markets to prevail um, and obviously data and whatnot to fall into line. But anyway, that got the market wobbling this morning. Uh, over at the RBA, we've had their minutes out as well, um, pretty much uh, in line in terms of their policy stance. The board considered the case to raise rates, but decided to uh, a steady outcome was better balanced uh, on the risks. Um, they said that the, it's possible the cash rate would have to stay steady for an extended period. Uh, members agreed it's unlikely rates would be cut in the short term. Uh, and an, an immediate hike in rates could be justified if risks to inflation had increased materially. Uh, keeping rates steady for a longer period than implied by markets could help restrain inflation. Um, now, some of the uh, big Aussie banks are calling uh, bollocks to uh, the RBA and uh, their possibility of hiking at least. Um, they've started cutting rates on term deposits, Commonwealth Bank uh, cut the rate uh, on its turning points by 50 basis points last week. NAB and ANZ followed up yesterday um, with uh, ANZ cutting theirs by 80 basis points. So uh, the banks at least um, not uh, given in to the RBA's hawkish comments. Um, now, these banks, it's a bit different to some of the other countries, they can move rates around as they see fit. It doesn't necessarily have to follow any moves in monetary policy. Uh, but the fact that they're cutting rates, as I say, calls out what I've been saying for a couple of weeks, uh, that the RBA is talking out its arse if it's uh, thinking that rate hikes uh, are needed and uh, they're more likely to be following with cuts at some point. Uh, when that is, I don't know. Uh, someone who is cutting is the Ricks Bank. They cut this morning to 3.5%, uh, 25 pips as expected. They say the policy rate can be cut two or three more times this year. Uh, Ricks Bank Governor Thieden saying that inflation expectations are in line with our assessment uh, and policy to adapt gradually as risks remain. Uh, anything else uh, from the Ricks Bank, mate? Or oh, it's it's been extremely bit? well telegraphed. Um, that that cut uh, coming over the past months, really. Um, so no, no, no big surprises. Um, and 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 as a matter of a fact, uh, barring uh, a few algo moves, uh, Stoppy hasn't moved uh, on on the back of it at all. Uh, it was all very much as expected. Um, no, I, I, I have no view on the on the Swedish corona right now, uh, apart from the fact that uh, it, it is a bit of the uh, an accelerated euro. Um, when uh, when the euro does well, uh, a risk uh, and risk does well on the other side. Uh, Swedish corona tends to do uh, even a little bit better, uh, and and that's mainly it. Uh, we we didn't see much of a of a move on the. On the back of the uh, um, Riggs Bank, anyway. Yeah, they're, they're very good at, uh, you know, forward guidance and taking these surprises so. out, aren't they? Um, which isn't isn't good for trading. It's not good for trading volatility, but at least you know where you stand with those guys compared to someone like the RBA. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, the Nordic banks uh, have a... Have a tendency of, of being relatively open uh, 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 to the markets as well. Um, Norges Bank is a bit the same. It's a different animal to trade Norwegian Krona and Swedish Krona, of course. But uh, no, they do uh, they do have a, the habit of uh, communicating uh, a lot and and communicating well to the markets. They don't like to uh, to really surprise markets that much. Yeah, exactly. 
a um, little bit of data out this morning um, over in Germany. Uh, we had some PPI data coming in round about as expected. Um, so not as much uh, a drop year on year uh, as last month, coming in at minus 0.8% and rising on a month 0.2%. Um, still some deflationary or disinflationary pressures seen there. Uh, we had some final numbers uh, CPI numbers from the Eurozone, all pretty much unchanged. Core CPI coming in unchanged 2.9% over the flash. Headline CPI also coming in unchanged over the flash 2.6%. A pip up on last month, though. So uh, no real changes there. Um, Fed's Cash Kari was out uh, last night or yesterday saying debate about potentially cutting rates in September is an appropriate one to have. Uh, the balance of risks have shifted more towards the labour market and away from the inflation side of our dual mandate. Uh, inflation is making progress and the labour market is showing some concerning signs. Um, pretty much echoing what uh, a lot of the other Fed heads have been saying, including the head man himself. Um, and that's obviously the focus, the main focus this week uh, as we head over into Jackson's Hole, uh, where we get to hear uh, what those guys, what power and anyone else is going to say regarding their res respective central banks. Obviously, everyone and his dog are throwing up, uh, you know, pieces, what they expect of power to do and whatnot. But... Uh, yeah, just put them all in a big pile and set fire to them uh, would be my advice. Just listen to what he says and take his direction um, from that, not uh, what anyone else thinks about what he's going to say. Uh, Bank of America Securities, uh, a little piece, uh, one of their uh, flow pieces, uh, saying foreign demand outside of US hours drove the dollar higher this year, but European-based investors have recently flipped to net short the dollar. Uh, the dollar's appeal to foreigners has declined. Uh, they see the euro dollar uptrend to 112 as both US and Europe based investors chasing the move. Uh, they say uh, there's also room for the Aussie to rise as European based investors further pair back dollar longs, US dollar longs. Um, and it says there's more US hours, euro dollar vol into the US elections. Uh, so, as you're saying, pair as they are saying, a lot of people get out the dollar. No surprise uh, for that, as you can see, with current price moves going on. Uh, speaking of the Fed, a poll sees uh, the Fed now cutting rate by 75 basis points this year, just over half of 101 economists say uh, that's up from 50 basis points in July. Um, I do note, uh, just looking at uh, the CME FedWatch, uh, that we're now, uh, normal service has been resumed, shall we say, with pricing 75% chance of a 25 pip cut, uh, whereas that was the other way, pricing a 50 basis point cut uh, a couple of weeks ago. So the market coming back round to a more sensible line of thinking. Um over in the UK, uh, I don't know if Kay mentioned this yesterday, but uh, the new PM is already under fire regarding strikes. Uh, did you mention that yesterday, Kay? Uh, no, not yet, uh, right. So Starmer, um, what he did in his first days was agree uh, pay hikes for Dr. Strike, uh, for Junior Dr. Strike, um, who they, they've been striking for quite some time. So he vowed to resolve that. He did in the first day. Um, he also um, agreed a pay deal for one of the transport unions. Um, however, that's now kicked off because some of the other unions, other doctors, other train unions, transport unions now want their previously agreed pay deals to be brought in line with these new ones. So he's facing another batch of strikes. So as far as fixing it uh, has been concerned, he's just made the matter worse. So the UK is now heading towards more strikes coming um, in uh, medical services and transport as well. Nice work, Captain. Um, the US and China have agreed to work more closely in times of financial stress, according to uh, some headlines around the grounds. Um, over in, well, over with this, this Gaza stuff, Israel stuff, um, apparently uh, Netanyahu has accepted the latest proposal put forward by US Secretary of State Blinken, 
Um, but <sighs> Hamas is still umming and arming about it, saying it's not what they have mm. been given previously. Um, so that's not uh, heading towards any sort of resolution, although it should be taken as a bit of a positive that both sides are talking. Um, we did hear potentially that Israel, uh, Iran popo, popo, uh, postponed the, the uh, retaliatory strike last week to avoid derailing the ceasefire talks in Gaza, but uh, an Iranian foreign minister spokesman said the ceasefire in Gaza is unrelated to Iran's retaliation plans. Um, so that's still bubbling over. I'm assuming, Kay, that uh, looking at the oil price, um, the fact that nothing happened in the latter part of last mm. week um, took the took the pulled the rug out from under that risk element. And, yeah, uh, I, 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 I think later add into the downfall. Yeah, that's your your weekend risk um, gone uh, gone away partially at least. Um, but yeah, what one side can accept and the other one uh, and the other one refuse, as Hamas has already said that they uh, they refuse that proposal. Um, Netanyahu can then <laughs> accept it, but if nobody else has accept uh, accepts it, uh, then he is the one who uh, will have the the good role, uh, the good cop uh, role in, in in there, right? Uh, I, I think it's, there's a lot of ping pong uh, to uh, to be had there uh, around or, or around phones or so. Um, yeah, I I I don't know how to really read it because once one refuses, there's a, there's another round of rockets flying. So I. I uh, until until something really positive happens on the, on the ground, I think uh, we'll we'll have to uh, keep it as uh, it's still ongoing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, from what I can make out, and as as Iran has said, there's, their retaliation is still on the table. Um, maybe they are holding off a bit, um, but last week it was coming mm -hmm. to a bit of a crescendo um, across Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday was when they were expected to do something. They didn't. So uh, the moving oil looks like uh, the market got a bit uh, bored waiting for that uh, and sees some of that risk coming off a bit. Um, obviously, some of the China data I noted last week wasn't the best, uh, industrial oh. production and the like. So uh, as I was saying, all through this rally in oil, um, once if that Iran risk dissipates, we get back to trading the fundamentals. It's showing you exactly again what happens. Take the risk rug out of it and the fundamentals mm. take over. So, again, we're not out the woods. If we do get a retaliation, maybe if talks break down, we'll see it all jumping again. After that, we need to see what type of retaliation it is. But the fundamentals will always take over in the end. Uh, so keep that in mind. Um, well, we, had, we had really four big spikes. And uh, every spike is uh, is ending uh, is ending up a little lower, as you as your picture shows uh, shows really well, and that's where the fundamentals take over again. So uh, I, this, if you look at this, is still not a higher for longer picture, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, and it's it's an important example to use when you're talking about fundamentals versus geopolitical headlines. What wins out overall in the end? Um, yes, there's risk, but then there's the use of uh, a commodity. Uh, and at the moment, that's the weaker side of the thing. Um, lastly, um, we've got this ongoing stuff going on in Ukraine, uh, who apparently took out uh, a third bridge in the Kursk region. Zelensky is now pushing for the West to let him use long-range weapons to strike further into Russia. Uh, that's been a bit of a red line for Western allies, shall we say, to allow... Um, the use of these weapons inside Russian territory. Um, Zelensky is pushing for that, though. Um, Putin has been remarkably quiet, um, which I don't know if is uh, more dangerous than good at the moment uh, regarding his response. Um, but it has been an escalation over the last week or so. Um, it does keep things elevated, even if markets still aren't really paying attention that much to it um but it's all going into the pot uh, but we are a couple of defcon levels or defcon level higher in my opinion in this uh, conflict than we were a couple of weeks ago so still one to keep in the back of your mind um anything else for anything else kate no i think you covered everything uh for today mate. good good right let's uh crack on uh look at what's going on 
Um, I'm going to look at uh, a couple of things, just a couple of trades that I'm still in at the moment. I only had a couple of bits on uh, going into my break last week. Um, Kiwi US dollar, uh, that was a long I took last week down into that uh, 60 level below. That's playing nicely, getting a nice little bounce off there. Really, we I'm looking at this, this range, this wider range, 58s, 62s. Um, we're heading up towards this 62s area. Um, that's going to be uh, a big old level, as you can see, plenty of action up there recently. Um, this is all more in part of what's going on in the dollar rather than the Kiwi. Um, so that's the, the contender here. Um, we know what the uh, RBNZ are doing with rates. Um, so obviously being in a cut cycle, we're not seeing the Kiwi rally. So that's all being driven by the US side, as is a lot of these pairs versus the dollar at the moment. So for me, I've been slicing and dicing, got a little bit left. Uh, I'll be looking at some of these high levels um, for chopping that off. Um, I'm not don't know if I want to reverse it if we get up the top here. I may do. I think when you're looking at what's happening in the, in the dollar and the Fed uh, and everything else going on, we're seeing this quite strong move as make expectations jump up and whatnot. Um, but these are the sort of levels that become decent stretch points. Um, so if we get POW, well, I'd say POW this week, Kay, it's more a case of whether he's – not as dovish as the market has been expected um, rather than being dovish. We know they're heading towards cuts. The market got a little bit excited over the last couple of weeks, as we know, um, in terms of how big those cuts are. But if if he um, comes out and says, yeah, you know, maybe you're looking at a September hike, then a pause or yeah. keeping, we're not going to go 50s or anything stupid like that. Um, maybe we've got a bit of a uh, top forming in some of these uh, dollar pairs. Yeah, I agree. Um, and my, with that, I, I was talking about that yesterday as well. Um, I, I think the market is dying for him to to give them the fifty basis points, and I don't. I personally don't think he's going to give the market the fifty basis points that uh, it's looking for this week. He will probably. I mean, he left the door open already a good few times uh, on on the rate cut, so uh, that that is. Probably um, always talk uh, conditionally, of course, but uh, that's probably a done thing. And uh, as I said, I mean, data will show us whether uh, they, a, a bigger cut is warranted. We do have another uh, labor report and another CPI report out uh, before the uh, before the FOMC, so we should be um, fixed on whether it's going to be twenty five or fifty. But I don't think that Powell is giving is giving the market uh, the fifty BPs on a plate uh, to this week. No, exactly. And uh, yeah, you, you missed all that fun, didn't you, when we were pricing into meeting cuts and all sorts yeah, of I was, I was, I was about that, wasn't Yeah. Yeah, I was just right there. That was on the last Monday or so that I that I was that I was here where, where Dolly and absolutely collapsed and uh, every, everything collapsed. Uh, and uh and and then uh yeah some intermeeting uh cut pricing and stuff. Oh no, perhaps that was just the day after, yeah. Um yeah. Yeah, well, well, yeah, that was completely bonkers. I mean, how how on earth will they will they do it if if you have the worst that happened was really a zero point two uh, percent increase in the jobs market, which is important because he has been hammering on it. Um, the 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 ten the trend or, or or yeah the 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 upside trend of of unemployment rate is there right now uh, because because we're coming from the threes and now we're back in the fours, but. Uh, is it going to warrant uh, anything uh, anything dramatic? No, I don't think so. And and actually, they have been announcing it quite uh, quite reasonably well. I mean, if the job market turns around, we we will act. But uh, this there shouldn't be uh, there shouldn't be any panic there, right? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I, I expect that we'll get um, yeah probably the dollar continuing in this vein for into pow and then. But I can certainly see him putting the. Mm -hmm his words, putting the blocks on the, this dollar weakness. And uh, as I say, if you're looking for levels, these are the big old levels you want to watch. If, if we can't get through there, then uh, potentially we've got a top in the Kiwi and we see the dollar coming back a little bit uh, more. Um, same can be said for Euro dollar. And I had a, I'm going to look at me wider charts, which I tend to do now and again, because we've, got, we've had this decent move. We're up testing some of these longer term range tops up here 111 
being uh, one of those in particular. Okay, so if you're looking at the range that we've got, sort of, you know, at 111s down to 105s, um, we're not really in a breakout situation yet. There are there are some breakouts of trend lines and whatnot going on. We're breaking above 110, obviously, um, but the wider ranges, the bigger levels, you've got to keep an eye on because we're still holding those for now. So it still keeps us in this range. Um, so really for Euro dollar, need to bust out this 111. We're starting to find a little bit of support into 110, low 110s. Um, that's going to be important. Need to maintain that just to break us out of this 110 bit of range. Uh, but we know we've had tries up here at 111 that uh, have faltered. So need to bust that, get above there. Um, if we do that, maybe we're on for testing the 112 level, which, again, is one of these big long-term levels. Um, it's a bit like, uh, almost like the 105 down below. Um, above there, just to show you the wider picture, we have 115, which is an absolute monster level. That is a bit like the 105 down below. So... Ranges within ranges within ranges at the moment, um, but we're not seeing a breakout. Again, these are the big levels that I'll be watching over power. Um, if the dollar's going to weaken, it has to knock out these levels and keep them knocked out. If we don't, um, I will be potentially interested in a short, particularly at that 112 level, um, if it's seen up there. Um, because anything above that, something must have changed. Uh, and if nothing has really changed, the Fed are only going to cut... Uh, 25 pips in September and take a slow approach. I can't see why this will keep going um, much higher. So taking a wider picture view on this one, a wider view of the picture, bigger levels that are in play rather than getting into uh, some of the uh, messier levels my everyday charts uh, tend to show. Um, Dolly Yen's been all over the shop um, as per normal. It's been up and down headlines whatnot um i still haven't got a clue um i don't trust this one at all it has been holding where it's needed to held though down into the 145s um we have been screwing around this 147 i saw we got the break above 148 but uh then we got into the 149s and uh, couldn't go no further so what was your view on this one coming back k um with a sort of bit of clearer mind on it well, um, yesterday's return made me think exactly in a, a, a mini was a mini version of what we saw um, the day that uh, my, my last day in the office uh, two weeks ago uh, on on the fifth. The, the, yesterday was a mini version of it on, on the Asian session, and we did get the rebound. Um, well, sticking my neck out, I think we are well at least into Friday, right? Um, yeah, the, the dollar is offered. Uh, there's no no doubt about it. Just look around the, the whole the whole spectrum. Um, yen is no exception, but I would assume that we start to range a little bit more uh, from here. Um, there is very little fundamental reason to 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 start um, uh, trading below 140, for instance, or even 141 from here. Um, the, and there is little reason looking at the dollar globally to start trading above those those highs that we saw um i do have a, a bit of levels up there in the 149s where it stopped dead so to me we are in a bit of a in a bit of a range and uh, especially into friday and then um on ueda we'll be talking on friday as well in parliament and then we have power in uh, in in the hall so i mean that uh, duo uh, should uh, tell us whether we trade closer to 140 or if uh, in turn we are going to trade closer, maybe even back above 150. Because when I look at the JGP yields, I'm not that impressed either, right? So um, I'm, um, I'm not following those moves uh, lower actually right now. I'm, really put again to my head, I'm rather looking at the other side and, and a bit of a bounce back. Um, as we can see there, you have a like a, a, an up and down move, but we are well below the 1%. And um, you're, you're talking about the biggest JGB uh, contract there, the 10 year. Um, if the market um, would be really thinking that the Bank of Japan is going to continue to hike in a, on a regular pace, that thing should be trading at 1% back above 
pretty soon, or perhaps already would have done. But we know that all the all the rest of the yields are coming down and blah blah blah. Um, there's 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 all sort of reasons for for it not to be up there and positioning uh, as well because the market is already short Japanese bonds, but. If the Bank of Japan really is uh, is serious, that thing is going to be trading back at 1%, perhaps even come Friday. And then you might be looking at the dollar yen going in for a, for a retest under 142 and probably closer to 140. But for the time being, I'm rather in a violent because the vols are very high. They don't come off. Uh, so... 150 points on a on a on a statement is something that we need to uh, take into account. Yeah, very much so. Um, now, just coming sitting down, I've only been off for a few days, obviously, but just sitting down and looking at, at some pairs um, like Euro Dollar. We're we're at this point again where we've got a big event coming up, and we're just sitting on some big levels like the 111, obviously there, cable up mooching against the uh, 130. We had that bigger level up there. Um, back in July, and obviously the high one last year. Um, dollar CAD, that's sitting down on the zone again, uh, the big 136, 135, 90, or 80, 135, 85 zone again. So we've got we've got this situation where we've got big risk events and pairs trading on these levels. Um, if we were trading on these levels normally, I'll probably be, you know, at the bag open and a shovel going. Um, but because we've got these events coming up, um, they can create extra volatility. You know, we could see some of these levels break. Um, again, I haven't said it for a while, Gavin, but I think it's going to be a case we come through this week and see where we sit after these events. Um, I am looking to trade this dollar CAD one into this zone. I'm still running sell stops, but I'm going to be mindful. We've got CPI today from Canada and obviously uh, Jackson's Hole later on. So, it is a risk that you see the data headlines flushing out these levels, but then the market has its moment, runs the stops or whatever, and then sits back above it. So it catches everyone out, and then we back where we started. So lots of these pairs are, are sitting on these big levels, so you've got to be mindful of them if you're looking to trade them. Know the risk events that are coming up uh, and manage your trades accordingly to those. Uh, last one before I hand it over to Kay, um, Euro Sterling. Back into this track area, 85.20s down to the figure uh, that we've traded so many times before ahead of the 85 level. Um, I'm still got a bit of short of us chopping down here. Stops now yanked right down just above 85.50 uh, on the balance of that. I don't, I don't know if we've got enough to break this level, this 85 level again. Um, certainly the fundamentals aren't really pointing to that. Um, so what I would be looking for is maybe a bit of consolidation to happen uh, between 85 and 86 for the moment. If we do break through here, though, uh, then we could be heading all the way back down to 84s. So as usual, decent one to play the ranges, play your big figures on this one, 84s, 85s, 86s uh, at the moment, uh, and see what happens from there. Right, Kate, going to bang it over to you, mate. Mm -hmm. Uh Find where my buttons are. Where are we? There we go. All yours. Hey, um, not going to show too many today because it's going to be all. I mean, apart from the Canadian CPI, we don't have that much going on today. But um, of course, we have to look at gold because we are trading at fresh highs. So. Um, we just traded up at that uh, 25 and a quarter, which I highlighted already. That is the an, an extension of the, the big setback that we saw back in 2022. Um, and we are here, you know, 25 and a quarter. Above there, you will have, and, and we can only look at extensions right now. If you look at it technically, uh, uh, we have 25 and a half. And if you really go on, on the longer term, um, above 25 and a half, we're talking about 100 bucks higher, around 26 and a half. Um, people are saying now, people are starting to talk about 3K in gold um, one step at a time, okay? Uh, because it is driven by lower yields across the board. It is driven by uh, geopolitics. It is uh, typically also one that uh, that doesn't... It, it, it feels like gold is now... Because if you look at other risk pairs, for instance, um, euro commodities, for instance, are, are, are coming down quite, quite a bit. Um, it, it does seem that all risk and 
um, all war risk and 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 all yeah uh, risk on everything else on lower yields uh, uh, across the board, barring in uh, Japan, is is starting to be concentrated here. Um, I have taken a little bit more off, and I'm going to monitor here. My stop uh, on the rest is now just below, just to to, to safeguard money from uh, where I bought it around here. Um, so. <sighs> I'm not going to say we have seen a top or we we are. Uh, um, you have to sell it around here, but uh, I am starting to get a bit cautious. Uh, this this is it is probably going to go further. I'm still long term bullish, also because of levels holding uh, holding so well. Every time we have a step higher, it it holds. Yesterday again, uh, we came back. Um, Towards this this support area, but not even really tested it, and we and we bounced straight away. Today we are trading at a new high. It's still very big, okay. Um, this this and that's why I'm I'm keeping it. But I am cautious going into the um, end of the week, especially. So uh, I may be tempted if we see twenty five and a half, just to let everything go tactically and uh, and just wait for a bit. And um, because I, as I said personally, I would not think that Powell is going to give the 50 BPs on to the market on a, on on a plate for September, you know. And then we may see a bit of a setback in 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 everything, right? It, it's also gone a little bit against um, a, a, the global risk trend right now because um, if usually if you see risk doing uh, doing a lot better, people don't need to go into physical stuff and and don't need to go in, in into gold especially that much we would expect silver also with 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 risk doing well with a, with a better economy to do well that is also doing well but gold is is really um actually starting to look a little like counter all the rest so this there's a big concentration of everything going into gold right now and Traditionally, we we know what it may mean. Okay, we may have one of those blow off tops coming, uh, as we've seen in the past, another 40, 50 bucks, really, really pretty fast. That's why I'm going to leave a few flyers um, if if the market wants to do it. But I would not be surprised sooner that we sooner or later um, go for at least a retest of what's happening around those prior highs here in gold in the 2480s. All right. First signal would be if we start to get back below. This, this little trend line again, I, I know we have been below yesterday, but the bounce was was immediate as well. Um, first little hint is, is a move now back below 2,500. And then keep a close eye on what's happening around 2,480, 85, I'd say, in, uh, in gold. Silver doing very well. That is also on the train. It It is, I mean... Silver is 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 one that is used as well uh, for for building arms and stuff, uh, but it's also on the on the the weaker the weaker dollar train uh, as well. So uh, it it is doing pretty well. Keep an eye on what's uh, what's happening again if we if we reach uh, the thirty mark because it's it's always been an area of interest. All right, we could also see some kind of a move, and then towards the end of the week, perhaps gradually coming back a little bit uh, into what Powell has to say um i've got just my long-term base long and i i have not added um because i wasn't i wasn't really around when when we did the lows but i could have because i was looking at it around 27 but uh i thought i missed uh, the bottom so i didn't do anything i'm just having my base long and and let it run um it does look though that even if Powell doesn't give the market much, if you get moves back down to mid 28, we may find uh, may find a few buyers there. Um, risk is doing pretty well and um, testifying are the euro commod process, and we are here on levels in this uh, euro Aussie. Um, I unfortunately did not get any uh, any rally to to start selling again, and we are already well back in the euros below 165. For as long as risk is doing well, this is probably going to be uh, to 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 still be weighed uh, weighed down a little bit because somewhere, if you look at the European fundamentals, as I said yesterday, it would also be supportive if risk does well that those crosses remain heavy. Same thing can be said from. Uh, on the Euro Kiwi, Euro Kiwi is coming back to an interesting level here as well. Broken trend line, 
50% of the panic move higher that we saw, um, uh, especially that, that move, last move here. The 50% lies exactly or roughly where the um, broken trend line comes in, which is around 180.20, 180.10. And it seems that we are going at least for a test of this. All right. And in the current context, looking at equity markets as well, in current context, I would view every move back up to higher 181s or so, back to this uh, uh, level here as well, maybe met by uh, a bit of selling interest. Um, You've already showed the dollar cat. I mean, yesterday there, there were those those trend lines here. They got broken. I got uh, I I tried a little one against the trend line, didn't work. But I I just re-entered the small one uh, around here where we are now, just to play this. Uh, and I stretched the level to one thirty five eighty five because that was the low here, uh, just to play this over the CPI. Of course, looking at the positioning in the market, which is seemingly still pretty short. Um, Canadian dollar. It could be that any sticky number uh, this afternoon on the CPI takes it down uh, uh, through there for stop for a stop run and um, back down to low 135s. That is, of course, a possibility before the fight is over. Um, as I was showing yesterday as well, that that 55 70 90 on uh, on the S and P, it's broken. All right. And now we are talking about or looking again at uh, what's going to happen around 56.40. And then, of course, those uh, those higher those highs here. So turn the flip the thing around. Now, this uh, 55.90 down to 55.70 is going to be your support zone on the on the S&P. Risk is doing still still pretty well. Um, interest rates are stable. The market is expecting power to give us something. The, the data are mixed, but not falling out of bed. So we are still in in a bit of um, Goldilocks soft landing kind of uh, kind of scenario, and, and equity markets just uh, just like it. Okay, um, I'm not planning to do much here, but um, going into Powell, if we would be in this 55, 70, 90 zone, that's where, in my opinion, we need to. Um, see where we where we are coming out of it, coming out of it. Okay, so uh, around here for the time being, well, I would say don't fight, uh, don't fight it. You know, don't fight it. I'd be worried. Well, not overly, but I'd be a little cautious if we start to break back below fifty five forty five, and especially between uh, below fifty five hundred. If we start to break below fifty five hundred and hold it, then I think we are perhaps in another leg lower. But in the meantime, there's very little use, in my opinion, to, to stand in front of this um, for the time being. We may see a bit of moves on that free power on, uh, on, on Thursday's PMI day. And right here, I'm, uh, I'm going to leave it right here because for the rest of the day, um, yeah, as I said, dollar yen up and down and in the middle. And that's, uh, that's how I'm planning to trade it, perhaps starting to look at, at a little longer than uh than uh, um yeah i I'm, i think we may we may start to find a few uh, a, a bit of demand somewhere um around those intermediate levels um yeah i'm i'm just but it's extremely small ali uh long dollar cap very very small um it, it's not something that's going to put my uh, my account at risk because one, I'm just back from uh, from holidays, and two, CPI is all, always a little bit of a lottery. Okay, um, we 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 just don't know where it comes out. Back over to you, right? Thank you very much, mate. Um, good to have you back. Um, we'll call that a day for today. Um, I don't think we've got much uh, out today either on the data front. Uh, just looking at it quickly, not a lot at all. So uh, we, apart from the uh, Canadian CPI. Uh, and uh, a couple of Fed heads later on, but I don't think they're speaking of anything important. So we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for coming to the Flow Show as always. Uh, have a great day, and uh, we'll see you bright and breezy tomorrow. See you later. Hey, traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.